So welcome everyone. Uh, we will continue with uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, uh, Chapter 15, and uh, this will be verse number 27. I will share the screen. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Desokalarta Yuktani Rita Pupasamanicha Harantis Maratas Chittam Govinda Bihitani Me Srila Prabhupada's translation. Now I am attracted to those instructions imparted to me by the personality of Godhead, Govinda, because they are impregnated with instructions for revealing the burning heart in all circumstances of time and space. So here Arjuna is speaking. Uh, Srila Prabhupada's purport. Herein, Arjuna refers to the instruction of the Bhagavad Gita, which was imparted to him by the Lord on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. The Lord left behind him the instructions of the Bhagavad Gita, not for the benefit of Arjuna alone, but also for all time and in all lands. The Bhagavad Gita, being spoken by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is the essence of all Vedic wisdom. It is nicely presented by the Lord himself for all who have very little time to go through the vast Vedic uh, literatures like the Upanishads, Puranas, and Vedanta Sutras. It is put uh, within the study of the great historical epic Mahabharata, which was especially prepared for the less intelligent class, namely the uh, women, the laborers, and those who are worthless descendants of the Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, and higher sections of the Vaishyas. The problem which arose in the heart of Arjuna on the battlefield of Kurukshetra was solved by the teachings of Bhagavad Gita. Again, after the departure of the Lord from the vision of earthly people, when Arjuna was face to face with being vanquished in his acquired power, in his acquired power and prominence, he wanted again to remember the great teachings of the Bhagavad Gita, just to teach all concerned that the Bhagavad Gita can be consulted in all critical times, not only for the solace from all kinds of mental ag agonies, but also for the way out of great entanglements, which may embarrass one in some critical hour. The merciful Lord left behind him a great uh, teachings of the Bhagavad Gita so that one can take the instructions of the Lord even when he is not visible to material eyesight. Material senses cannot have any estimation of the Supreme Lord, but by his in inconceivable power, the Lord can incarnate himself to the sense perception of the conditioned souls in a suitable manner through the agency of matter, we, uh, which is also another form of the Lord's manifested energy. Thus, the Bhagavad Gita, or any authentic scriptural sound representation of the Lord, is also the incarnation of the Lord. There is no difference between the sound representation of the Lord and the Lord himself. One can derive the same benefit from the Bhagavad Gita as Arjuna did in the personal presence of the Lord. A faithful human being who is desirous of being liberated from the clutches of material existence can very easily take advantage of the Bhagavad Gita and with this in view the Lord instructed Arjuna as if Arjuna were in need of it. In the Bhagavad Gita five important factors of knowledge have been delineated pertaining to one the supreme lord, two the living being, three nature, four time and space, and five, the process of activity. Out of these, the Supreme Lord and the living being are qualitatively one. The difference between the two has been analyzed as the difference between the whole and the part and parcel. Nature is inert matter, uh, displaying the interaction of the three different modes, and eternal time and unlimited space are considered to be beyond the existence of the material nature. Activities of the living being are different varieties of the aptitude 
which can entrap or liberate the living being within and without material nature. All these subject matters are concisely discussed in the Bhagavad Gita, and later the subject matters are elaborated in the Srimad Bhagavatam for further enlightenment. Out of the five subjects, uh, the Supreme Lord, the living entity, nature, and time and space are eternal, but the living entity, nature, and time are under the di uh, direction of the Supreme Lord, who is absolute and completely independent of any other control. The Supreme Lord is the Supreme Controller. The material activity of the living being is beginningless, but it can be rectified by transfer into the spiritual quality. Thus, it can cease its material qualitative reactions. Both the Lord and the living entity are cog or co cognizant, and both have the se sense ident identification of being conscious as a living force. But the living being under the condition of material nature called Mahatattva misidentified, misidentifies himself as being different from the Lord. The whole uh, scheme of uh, Vedic wisdom is targeted to the aim of eradicating such a misconception and thus liberating the living being from the illusion of material identification. When such an illusion is eradicated by knowledge and renunciation, the living beings are responsible actors and enjoyers also. The sense of enjoyment in the Lord is real, but such a sense in the living being is a sort of wishful desire only. This difference in consciousness is the distinction of the two identities, namely the, the Lord and the living being. Otherwise, there is no there is no difference between the Lord and the living being. The living being is therefore eternally one and different simultaneously. The whole instruction of the Bhagavad Gita stands on this principle. In the Bhagavad Gita, the Lord and the living beings are both described as Sanatana or eternal, and the Lord's abode far beyond the material sky is also described as Sanatana. The living being is in, invited to live in the Sanatana existence of the Lord and the, uh, the process which can help a living being to approach the Lord's abode where the liberated activity of the soul is exhibited is called Sanatana Dharma. One cannot, however, reach the eternal abode of the Lord without being free from the mis misconception of material identification. And the Bhagavad Gita gives us a clue how to achieve this stage of perfection. The process of being liberated from the misconception of material identification is called, in different stages, fruitive, fruitive activity, empiric philosophy, and devotional service, up to transcendental realization. Such transcendental realization is made possible by da uh, dovetailing all the above items in relation with the Lord. Prescribed duties of the human being, as directed in the Vedas, can gradually purify the sinful mind of the conditioned soul and raise him to the stage of knowledge. The purified stage of acquiring knowledge becomes the basis of devotional service to the Lord. As long as one is engaged in researching the solution of problems of life, his knowledge is called yan or pu pu purified knowledge, but on realizing the actual, actual solution of life, one becomes situated in devotion in the devotional service of the Lord. The Bhagavad Gita begins with the problems of life by discriminating the soul from the elements of matter and proves by all reason and argument that the soul is indestructible in all circumstances and that the outer covering of matter, the body and the mind change for another term, change for another term of material existence, which is full of miseries. The Bhagavad Gita is therefore meant for terminating all different types of miseries, and Arjuna took shelter of this great knowledge, which had been imparted to him during the Kurukshetra battle. Om Bhagyana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Jakshurum Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtanya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhaktivedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswate Deve Guravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda 
Shri Advaita Gadatara Shiva Sadi Gura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Nama Hong Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pashtaya Bhutale Shri Mate Chandamam Viswami Mati Namine So this uh, this is a very interesting verse both the verse and uh, and the the purport had so many points which are just impossible to cover in uh, in this limited time but uh, i i will try to discuss some points of it so if uh, if we read the verse itself for me uh, three interesting point uh, points uh, uh, were were prominent one is that uh, Arjuna says that he is attracted to the in instru in instructions of the Lord and uh, and his uh, his guidance. So whatever um, instructions and guidance Arjuna got on the battlefield of Kurukshetra in Bhagavad Gita, which we also got, um, we can also have uh, some kind of attraction for it if uh, if we endeavor because it's very very beneficial for us. And uh, and Arjuna is such a nice example in this regard. Also, another point is that uh, so here it was that uh, he says now I'm attracted to those instructions, and uh, he says also that they are impregnated with instructions for revealing relieving the burning heart. So actually, these instructions uh, are able to to help. Uh, just um, stop all our sufferings which is uh, which is usually <laughs> very much there present in our lives so if uh, if we get this knowledge we can uh, we can get rid of suffering in our life and the third point is that in all circumstances all circumstances of time and space so this is such a great knowledge that uh, it doesn't matter what are the circumstances. It doesn't matter if uh, if it's Satya Yuga or Kali Yuga. If it, it doesn't matter if uh, we are young or old or, or whatever circum circumstances, this knowledge is always valid and always can help relieve uh, our burning heart. It can also help us to get rid of our suffering. So why we don't don't uh, feel this sometimes? So if we we consider our own situation uh, in these points, so the first point is that uh, Arjuna is attracted to this knowledge, uh, to the instructions of the Lord. And uh, what are we attracted to? So actually, we are attracted to sense gratification. That's the obvious answer. But uh, many times, it's uh, if in in regards of uh, knowledge, we can say that we are attracted to material knowledge, uh, the kind of knowledge which uh, which supports um, sense gratification. Because obviously, spiritual knowledge uh, doesn't support. Uh, spiritual knowledge can help us to to have a peaceful life and happy as possible in the material world but the goal is not that but uh, the the material knowledge has the goal of uh, enhancing our sense gratification so that's why it's it's so much easier to be attracted to material knowledge the second point is that uh, it can uh, relieve our burning heart so it can help us uh, get rid of suffering so Whatever we are attracted to, this uh, we can say this uh, material knowledge, it can get us some kind of uh, relief for some time in certain circumstances. So our our suffering can be a little bit uh, subdued, and uh, even we we can get uh, some kind of uh, sense gratification. So we can we can enjoy uh, the results of uh, this knowledge. But uh, it's actually all temporary and illusionary. And uh, in the end, it's always suffering in the, in the ultimate end. So 
this material knowledge is actually something which uh, which gives some benefit sometimes on a short term, but on a long term, it just brings suffering, while spiritual knowledge uh, stops suffering. And the third point was that uh, this uh, spiritual knowledge, the instructions of the Lord, uh, work in every circumstances in all time in uh in all, all space so yeah i forgot to, to mention that one that uh, if we are on the on the heavenly planets or on the earthly planets or in the hellish hellish uh, region whatever wherever we are uh, it uh, it works but uh, our our knowledge uh, the instruction which we like instructions which we like to follow uh, which uh, you know we we hear from some advertisements or or uh, schools or or wherever we go. So in some circumstances they seem to work, but uh, not all circumstances. But even if they seem to work, um, the the result is always temporary. So it won't work on the long term, and. Uh, and the result is much smaller, and we can say smaller, yeah, but actually illusionary. So it's not real result. And uh, this is our situation. So here is the uh, the example of Arjuna, and uh, it's it's such a nice example for us to to have faith in in this uh, great devotee's words that uh, the Lord's words uh, have this this kind of power. And the his words are attractive, his words are are helpful, and uh, and work in in all circumstances. And uh, I thought that uh, maybe I could uh, I I would speak a little bit more about uh, the differences of uh, of the Vedic knowledge and uh, this material knowledge, because uh, I think it will help us to to see more clearly that uh, our vision our material vision is uh, is such a big mistake <laughs> but, uh, because you know we are conditioned uh, in in uh, this this knowledge this culture uh, on the west uh, we we don't even notice this so i will have something like i don't know seven to eight points uh, which uh, which will show the the differences, and uh, I I hope I will fit in time because uh, it's actually from a, a longer class and uh, and it's always difficult for me to <laughs> to get to the end. And but uh, anyway, let's try it. So the first point would be that uh, in in our society, we generally don't make a distinction distinction between information and uh, theoretical knowledge and realized knowledge so that's that's already one one point which which is worth uh, considering so you know many times we think that uh, oh there were those people hundreds and thousands of years ago and uh, they had such an uncultured life because we have uh, we have uh, so much nice machines now we have the internet we have the social media so so we have so many nice tools we can play with, and this is because we are so uh, so smart, we can say. So uh, Guru Maharaj used to used to uh, quote Srila Prabhupada from one of the morning uh, morning walks when he was always uh, he was also present when Srila Prabhupada spoke about that uh, the the human uh, humans uh, are rushing or driving fast uh, on four wheels and uh, and the the dogs are are running on four, four four legs but what is the difference so you know four wheels or four legs whatever the goal is the same that uh, both are are just chasing sense gratification so can we say that because because uh, we are we are driving fast on four wheels we are more, uh, more. Our, our knowledge is more developed, or we are we are better in any way than than the the dogs. If uh, if we behave the same way, then we are just the same. 
So it's not like um, we are we are smarter than than the people of previous ages just because we have more machines. The um, we actually have to have to uh, know why we are doing things and. Uh, there is a nice story about uh, Durvasa Muni. I will say a few stories about different Munis. Uh, we are speaking knowledge about knowledge after all. So Durvasa Muni on one, one occasion uh, was arriving to, to Shiva's, Lord Shiva's uh, court. He had a gathering with uh, many different sages and uh, Lord Shiva was, uh, uh, was there present. And Durvasa Muni arrived with a with a huge pile of books. He carried them, and uh, you know, without uh, just greeting anyone, he just uh, rushed beside uh, Lord Shiva and and sat down there uh, without any any greetings or or any um, any respects uh, for others. And Lord Shiva was. Uh, wasn't offended or, or you know, all the sages knew that, oh yeah, Durvasa Muni is like that. So they didn't uh, say anything. Lord Shiva was also smiling. He just inquired about uh, how uh, Durvasa Muni's studies are going on. But uh, at one point, Narada Muni just uh, stood up and, and sa uh, just uh, said that, uh, Durvasa, you are just a, a donkey. And you can imagine, even for, for smaller things, uh, Durvasa Muni was really offended. So he was full with rage. And, uh, and there was an argument between the two. And Narada Muni said that, yes, you are do the donkey after all, because donkeys are uh, always carrying uh, different burdens. And, and uh, you also carry these, this huge pile of books but uh, what what do you use this for? Um, because uh, if someone has knowledge, if someone had absorbed uh, knowledge which are uh, which is in uh, there in in these books, uh, obviously it's uh, is there in their behavior. So you just came here, you didn't even greet anyone, you didn't even show any respect. You just carry these books, but you don't absorb this knowledge which is uh, inside these books. And uh, this time, Durvasa Muni understood that, oh, yeah, there really was a lesson for me here. So, so he, he started to, to um, do some self-realization. Uh, self, uh, and uh, this is also a nice, uh, nice uh, story, nice example for us, because... Uh, I think many of us have all the spiritual books on our shelves, but what do we do with them? Do we read them? Do we value them? Do we absorb the knowledge in them? Do we put it into practice or not? So we shouldn't just uh, carry these books. We shouldn't just buy these books, but uh, we should absorb practically the knowledge which is inside of these. And uh, so, Actually, Vedic knowledge uh, makes a distinction between Gyan and Vigyan. So our goal is not, not, only Vigyan, uh, not only Gyan, but also Vigyan, realized knowledge. We want uh, this knowledge to transform us. And uh, that's different from just having some theoretical knowledge, uh, knowing all the information uh, you know, by heart, so we can repeat it back like a parrot. So we want more than that. So let's be greedy for real knowledge. Uh, and uh, yeah, so when uh, Guru Maharaj gave a seminar about uh, reading, studying the scriptures, he spoke about the the process of uh, of uh, learning, and he said that the first stage is uh, reading or hearing this knowledge. The second stage is understanding. So we have to complete, contemplate on this knowledge. We have to uh, we have to think about what what different kinds of meanings are there? Because many times there are so many meanings in even in one verse. And when we have some kind of understanding, think about how can uh, how we can apply it. So uh, applying it is the third stage. 
And when we start to apply it, at some point we will have uh, realizations. And I remember uh, when I first uh, heard about this, I thought that, oh yeah, realizations are the last, uh, last uh, stage, but no, there is one more stage when, uh, when we really absorb this knowledge and actually we will have uh, higher values, higher principles. So it will be just a, just <laughs> a natural part of our life. So, so this is the process of, uh, of uh, absorbing knowledge and we have to endeavor for that. And also in the scriptures, there are different uh, this, uh, this, uh, descriptions of, uh, of how to absorb knowledge. And in the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad, uh, there is uh, three categories. Uh, the probably many of us you heard about this shravana, manana, and uh, nididhyasana stages, and actually these uh, correspond to what uh, Guru Maharaj said. So shravana is that yeah we hear about uh, knowledge, manana is that we contemplate about this knowledge, and nididhyasana is that we are applied in this knowledge. So so the goal is that that uh, our behavior transforms. By, by by this knowledge and uh, there is another categorization in the yoga sutras uh, which speak about uh, uh, that the first uh, first stage is uh, learning analyzing and uh, arguments arguments are very nice because these uh, this help to to make our our understanding deeper and uh, more likely cl clarifies all the all, all kinds of uh, doubts. So the second stage is uh, is contemplation, meditation, intuition, understanding, and the third is uh, that we absorb it and apply it, and the fourth one is uh, is uh, it is said that it's uh, equal to Svarupa City, uh, which is the perfection of uh, Ashtanga Yoga. And uh, there is a newer uh, categorization, which is in uh, Naishatya Charita, or uh, Naishatya Charita. And uh, it says that uh, there are four levels. The first is that we thoroughly study the topic. The second is uh, we have uh, some kind of uh, profession in, uh, in uh, learning. The third one is that it's very interesting. That's why I, I really wanted to speak about this one. The third one is that we understand the goal of our learning. So we don't just learn and yeah, yeah, it will lead to somewhere. We understand also the goal, where it will lead to us. What is my motivation for learning this? And the fourth one is that uh, we also give this knowledge to others. So this also explains, you know, this. there is this famous verse or verses in Bhagavad Gita in, in chapter 13, where Krishna speaks about what is knowledge and what is, that everything else is not. And, uh, and it's so interesting that uh, not, uh, he doesn't speak so much about learning there. He mostly speaks about different qualities which will be developed. So... So this is the first point that uh, the goal of Vedic knowledge is applied knowledge, uh, realized knowledge, and not just information, not just theoretical knowledge that, you know, if I cannot practice, I will teach it <laughs> like that. So the goal is always that I will apply it. I will do it. The second point uh, would be that uh, there is uh, uh, knowledge based on experiences, own experiences, and uh, knowledge which is uh, revealed to us. And, uh, you know, we many, many times speak about this, that uh, knowledge in our society, uh, material society, is uh, based on what, whatever we experience around us. But the problem is that uh, our sense perception is, uh, is not good, so it's very easy to cheat it. And also, we, it's very limited, so easy to cheat it, and it's also limited. So even the, the bricks which we want to uh, build our house of knowledge, 
even the bricks are are just uh, bad quality. So how will you how will we be, uh, build a nice and uh, and fix house with uh, with just bad uh, ingredients, uh, bad elements? So it's it's not possible to to have proper knowledge based on this. But uh, we can have knowledge from the perfect source, which uh, which is uh, not possible to to be cheated. So that's you know just imagine that uh, we are uh, living entities on on the uh, not in in space the three D but in two D two D two dimensions. So. I mean, we are visiting uh, as 3D uh, people, uh, the uh, 2D people, and we just try to describe to them what is uh, what are the different uh, shapes in space. But you know, all those uh, shapes which has uh, the same projection for the 2D two dimension people those will be the same. So they they won't be able to, to understand what is the difference between, uh, oh, sorry, I don't know the names in English of the, these. Uh, sometimes, you know, the, there is a square, uh, the, the projection, but anything which is above the, the square, it can be different. And uh, in three dimension, we can see it. But uh, those people in the two dimension, they won't be able to see it. So how can they live a life like uh, three dimension people? So it's, uh, it's, it's important to, to get the knowledge from those who live in the three dimension. So for us, we also have a limited uh, understanding based on what we experience around us. But that's why we have to get the knowledge from higher sources where where uh, Krishna and uh, his associates, they they have the perfect knowledge, which is in the higher, we can say higher dimensions than than our own. So that's the second point that uh, there is a difference between experience knowledge based on experiences and the uh, knowledge based on uh, revelations, the revealed knowledge. So our third point is uh, actually I spoke about it uh, a little bit already that uh, this uh, this knowledge should transform us, and that's why that's why um, Vedic knowledge has three aspects, namely sambanda, abhideya, and prayojana. So, for example, you know we will have our disciples meeting next year in Vila Vrindavan. Actually, I've never been to Villa Vrindavan before. And I know that it's somewhere in Italy, but don't know exactly where. But uh, I will have to plan how to get there for the disciples meeting. So actually, my, my uh, how to say, sambanda, we could say, that I have to know where I, I will travel from. So now I'm in Budapest, but maybe... The time when I will travel, I will go from my parents, which is another town in Hungary. So our travel will be different based on where I start from. So I will have to know where I, what is my position right now when I'm, I'm traveling. And the next point is that I will have to know exactly where is uh, Villa Vrindavan in Italy. And uh, that's the Prayogen aspect. And also, I will have to search it out what is the process to, to travel there? So I will have to know if I should travel by, by train or by, by uh, plane or, or bus or, or whatever, is the, uh, whatever are the possibilities. So, so that's, that's the abhideya, the process. And in our society, uh, material knowledge mostly focuses on abhideya. So how to how to do things, you know, just the activity itself. Uh, it's a bit rajastic uh, approach, but uh, a little bit also uh, focuses on prayojan, but not so much, not, not all of it. That's why, you know, it happens when there is some kind of problem, we solve the problem, but uh, we don't care about all the side effects, which will come after some time. 
So those side effects are also part of the 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 goal which we will achieve. So we have to consider also those. So we have to uh, be conscious about the sambanda, our current position, the abhideya, the the activity, uh, the process which will lead to the priyojan, the goal. So transcendental knowledge is built in a way that. Uh, this knowledge is fully aware of all aspects and considers all these aspects, so can give us the proper knowledge. The, the next point is, uh, which I also mentioned a little bit, that uh, the, the goal of the knowledge, this knowledge is also part of the knowledge. Because uh, why should I learn it if it's not relevant for me, if, if I don't want to get there, uh, where this leads? So, you may remember when uh, Ashwatthama uh, fired his uh, Brahmastra weapon and also Arjuna uh, released uh, his Brahmastra weapon. And uh, they both had knowledge about how to use the weapon. But, uh, but still there was a big, big difference between the, the knowledge of the two. First of all, Ashwatthama didn't know the goal of, of uh, his, the, this tool because uh, the Brahmastra was never meant for, to, to use it for personal revenge. Ashwatthama used it for, for revenge. And uh, Arjuna didn't. Arjuna used it for protecting the Dharma, to follow Krishna's instructions. So, so that's, that's a great difference between the, the motivation of the two, two person. And... Uh, and uh, the second difference is that uh, that Ashwatthama didn't know how to how to draw this weapon back, but Arjuna knew it. So, so actually, it means that uh, Arjuna had control over this weapon even after he released it, and that's a greater knowledge. In, so he had greater knowledge about the use of this weapon in in all senses. And uh, so we can see that we are all, also a little bit like uh, Ashwatthama, that uh, we are satisfied that, oh, I could create so many things, I could create this machine and, uh, and so many others, but, uh, but what is the goal of these, uh, these machines? And uh, if I can uh, uh, get rid of them after, uh, if, if they are not needed. So we, we don't bother with the, the side effects which uh, or or the uh, re all the results of our actions so you can see that we we created so many plastic and what happens this plastic is uh, not uh, degradable by itself so we have to create something which uh, in some way how to get rid of all this but uh, but it's not part of the knowledge so far. So, and also if we speak about the, the goal of this knowledge, uh, we have to be fully aware that uh, the goal of this knowledge or this Vedic knowledge is Krishna. There are uh, more reasons for that. Uh, obviously there is one main reason that uh, he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Godhead and we are uh, his eternal servants. So we have to have the goal to please him but uh, there are i would say some some secondary reasons also which uh, in some sense we can more likely relate to so one thing is that uh, i was really uh, it really struck me when i i first heard about that uh, there were some demons like hiranyakashipu and ravana and actually they had great vedic knowledge so I remember when in this uh, seventh canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, we can read that Hiranyaksha died and uh, all the family is really upset and uh, Hiranyakashipu starts to preach to them that we are not this, uh, uh, this body. And, oh, wow. <laughs> so it, it's really interesting. But the problem is that, yes, he had this uh, great knowledge, but he didn't realize the goal of this knowledge. So this knowledge... Uh, for him wasn't wasn't complete wasn't perfect that's why it wasn't beneficial for others because he 
he just used, he uh, exploited this knowledge. And the other aspect is that uh, we are, as, as it was mentioned also in this, uh, in this uh, purport by Srila Prabhupada, we are not able to, to learn all this Vedic knowledge. It's, it's just uh, so big, uh, such a huge quantity of knowledge that it's, it's not possible to learn it uh, in one lifetime. And here comes our second uh, uh, Muni stories, uh, story. Uh, it's about uh, Bharadvaj Muni, who, who was one of the Saptarishis. And, uh, and actually, he had great, great desire to learn. He, he wanted to study and, and learn all the Vedas, but he realized that it's not possible within his uh, limited lifetime, around 100 years. So, uh, so he did some renunciation and uh, pleased Indra. And when Indra appeared, this Muni asked him to, to grant him uh, another extra uh, hundred years of lifetime so he can learn some more. It's already so, so much nicer <laughs> approach than the, the demon's uh, desire to live forever. And, and also the goal is, is uh, much, much better. But uh, he started immediately to, to study, but uh, the end of the 100, 100 years uh, approached and he realized that, oh my God, I couldn't uh, finish my, my studies. So again, he pleased Lord, Lord Indra and uh, again asked uh, for another 100 years. So this happened five times actually. And uh, after the fifth time, uh, when he again started to do his renunciations and Indra appeared, Indra said that, okay, let's just stop for a moment. So Indra manifested three great mountains. And uh, Bharadvaj thought that, uh, oh, these mountains must uh, symbolize my knowledge of the Vedas. But what uh, Indra Dev did was uh, he took a little bit of mud from uh, all, all the three mountains. And uh, in the end, it was uh, like a handful of dust in, uh, in, in his hand. And he said that these three mountains symbolize the, all the knowledge of the three Vedas. And uh, this handful of, uh, of uh, mud, this is what you have learned so far. So what, uh, what are you going to do about it? And Boradvaj really, uh, really panicked. Oh, my God, what will I do? How many hundreds of years, you know, started to calculate the math? And, uh, and he didn't know what to do. So he asked uh, Indra Dev's advice. And Indra told him that, you know, it's not possible to, to learn all this, uh, this vast Vedic knowledge in, in a lifetime. But what you can do is uh, to learn the essence of this knowledge. And, uh, and that is to always uh, remember Lord Krishna. So actually, Bharadvaj Muni followed this example in, and he, he started to, to try to realize the, the essence, the, the, the main point, the goal of the Vedas, and to, to meditate on, on, uh, on the Lord. And uh, yeah, I try to be faster. <laughs> so the the next point is uh, which uh, we already mentioned. It was one of the three points of uh, of the verse. So this knowledge, Vedic knowledge, is uh, it can uh, can destroy all our sufferings, and the result will be not just temporary, not just illusionary, but it will be eternal. So we know that uh, ignorance causes our suffering. And that's uh, the main, main ignorance is that uh, we identify with our, with our body. And uh, Keshava Swami, uh, he said that uh, the, the greatest lie in this world is that uh, we think that uh, material results, material success, material objects, material relationships, material situations, material arrangements can make us happy. And he said, here is the, the very, very interesting point, that all the, uh, the lies in the world are ba either based on this lie or support this lie. So we can say that this is the Mahalai. <laughs> so, so 
because there is this is the root of our of our ignorance that we believe this lie and uh, then all the other lies will come into our life and uh, and that is the cause of our suffering so with the with this word of knowledge we have to cut this lie and then uh, our suffering will be uh, relieved and uh, and yes so so the the results will be eternal and also um also it if we have some kind of problems it uh, it won't just uh, how to say not just uh, handles the problem this uh, this knowledge but can uh, can help us even avoid the whole problem so for example for me it was really uh, a nice uh, example when I, I did uh, once this uh, Ayurvedic uh, treatment. And then I understood that, uh, yeah, Ayurveda is, which is part of Ved Vedic knowledge, Ayurveda is helpful in, uh, in uh, curing our diseases. But, uh, but Ayurveda's main point is to uh, prevent these diseases. And this is the approach of Vedic knowledge. It helps us to prevent all the problems which which can come uh, if we follow all the so-called material knowledge. So so this is a, also a, a difference. And uh, and another point uh, we approach the the end. <laughs> so another point is that uh, Vedic knowledge is uh, is beneficial for everyone. So in uh, in Srimad Bhagavatam, actually this is the first verse, not first, second verse. So yeah, here it is. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. So it also uh, states that uh, it will help us get rid of suffering. But uh, it also says that uh, this highest truth, this knowledge, is uh, for the welfare of all. So because we are, if we follow Vedic knowledge, we follow the, the instructions of the Lord. Uh, the Lord, the, whatever he does, is beneficial for everyone. And if we... Um, synchronize our desires and actions with uh, with his desires then it will also be beneficial for all so not just you know beneficial for me and all the others are not so important or not just beneficial for my country and all the other countries are not so important or not just beneficial for all the people on the earth right now, but our grand grandchildren will suffer for uh, from the consequences. But it's beneficial for all, all time, everywhere, and it's very, very, very great thing. And um, and also, uh, Ved Vedic knowledge covers uh, three topics which are connected to the three modes of nature, namely uh, creation. Uh, maintain, maintenance and uh, and destruction. So we could see that uh, that uh, yeah, Ashwatthama could create a weapon, but Arjuna could uh, not just create it, but also destroy it. So real knowledge is that uh, that we can we can uh, properly use uh, those things which we got by this knowledge, and we can create it, we can maintain it, when and we can we can destroy it if it's needed. So, uh, just to to close this uh, this uh, presentation, because uh, most of this knowledge we get from Srila Prabhupada's books, and obviously this is the time of the year when Srila Prabhupada's books are even more in the focus of our spiritual life. Uh, this uh, Srila Prabhupada marathon, and I I just wanted to tell some personal uh, mm, story that. Uh, when I first read uh, Srila Prabhupada's <laughs> books, I, I think the first one, it was uh, Bhagavad Gita. And I remember that I first read it and and uh, after, even while, while reading it, I, I had this feeling that, oh, it's, it's not, mm, yeah, it's nice, but it's not so interesting for me because, you know, I had really 
always have this very philo philosophical thinking and I, I thought that it's so simple <laughs> and uh, now I know that it was it was such a great mistake to think like that on my side because it really showed that I I didn't really contemplate and I didn't really go deep into it but uh, later on when I, I read uh, some of uh, the Acharya's books. Uh, the big revelation came when I, I started to read uh, Madhurya Kadambini. And uh, and uh, I could read some kind of uh, proving method there, which was uh, quite similar to, uh, to my uh, math uh, lessons in the university. And then I was really struck that, oh, wow, there are these Acharya's who were not not so-called just saintly, saintly persons who are meditating all day under the tree or had great faith and, and you know, dancing happily and so many other things, but, but they were great scholars also. So they, they had such great knowledge. And what Srila Prabhupada actually did, then I realized it, uh, that Srila Prabhupada took all of uh, these commentaries on, on the scriptures and just uh, had a combination of this, which contained all of them and uh, wrote it in an easy to digest way. So even the simple people uh, can understand it. It doesn't require any academic knowledge or something. And you know, when, when there is an Acharya who can understand this deep knowledge, who can, uh, who can uh, explain this deep knowledge, that's already such a great thing. But when someone can explain this, this deep and, and great knowledge in a simple way, that's just genius, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's amazing. So then I really started to appreciate uh, what Srila Prabhupada gave to us. And actually, these, these scriptures, at least uh, we can say uh, the Bhagavad Gita is for sure, we can read here. This is for the simple people. So it's uh, Bhagavad Gita is part of Mahabharata, which was written for, for women also, for the, for the simple people, laborers. And, uh, and Srila Prabhupada uh, really brought out the deep meanings in a simple way. And that's just amazing. So... If we go back to the to the verse, the example of Arjuna, Arjuna thought that this is a knowledge, this is uh, such a knowledge, this uh, Bhagavad Gita, which can be applied in all circumstances. So for him, it was really practical and, uh, and can help get rid of all the suffering in all time, all space, all circumstances. And this knowledge is so attractive. So just uh, try to meditate on this, that how can we also uh, develop this, uh, this mentality to really value the teachings of Krishna and, uh, and uh, what all the paramparadi, Acharya, Srila Prabhupada and our Guru Maharaj uh, give us. Okay, <laughs> so uh, this is uh, the end of, uh, of, of this uh, presentation. Thank you for your patience. We just <laughs> reached the hour, but uh, I I have uh, time. So if uh, if there are any uh, comments, realizations, and uh, and uh, any any questions, just uh, let, let me know. Please please share it. Hare Krishna, Mataji, Hare. please accept the obeisance is all to Shira <clears throat> Amazing class, Mataji, as usual. Every time you come up with such a lovely example and so simply explaining is, is seriously mind-blowing. Thank you so much for that. I just wanted to say thank you. And there were so many things that was made so easily, like um, Abhida approach and Asambanda. Wow, <laughs> such a great examples you are giving, you know in the general life. So thank you for that. Thank you so much for for your feedback. <laughs> Hare Krishna.
Mm, and just if, uh, have any questions? And I, uh, Mataji, where, where are you getting stories from? Stories? Oh, oh. wow. <laughs> uh, well, di different uh, different sources. Uh, actually, most of them I don't even remember. I have a database where I cr uh, collect all these, and uh, oh. sometimes uh, sometimes from classes and. Uh, Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, That's this good. one actually, I uh, for 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 these two, I mm. remember that um, there was this uh, Durvasamuni story. Mm. I read it on one web page, which uh, which was uh, one in Iskon devotee. I think uh, he's a creation devotee. It's uh, he has a, a web page called uh, Bhagavad Kata. And there are some past times there. And I've read this uh, Durva Samuni story there. And the other story, I just remember that, oh, I heard it somewhere. And uh, because I didn't remember actually the details, I just, uh, again, searched it on, on the internet. Mm -hmm. But uh, but I don't remember the original source. So sometimes, you know, just some memories come that I've heard it somewhere, but my memory is just terrible. So I have to look them <laughs> up again. <laughs> That's why I have the database, because uh, I forget everything. <laughs> you know, I need to see your database. This must be so organized. I, I need to do something like that. <laughs> but, yeah, seriously, it's so nice. Okay, I think Sonal Mataji has got some questions. Right, go for it. Thank you so Hi, much. Krishna. Hi, Krishna. Thank, thank you so much for a wonderful class, as always. Uh, uh, just again, I think the, the the question is, how do you study? Because I'm getting a bit overwhelmed with all these books on my shelves, you know. Uh, I pick up a book and I can't even read more than a page. And then it it, it takes time for me to process it. So how how mm -hmm. shall I get, how did you, what's your experience? How, do, how did you manage to study so much for all these years? Uh, well, uh, it's always depend on, on the circumstances, how much time I have. Actually... I, I have a lucky nature that I, although I, I have to create the time and that, that's a difficulty for me. But uh, when I get to to be able to read, I, I really like it. So for me, there is such great taste in, in reading. Uh, but sometimes it's, uh, you know, focus is difficult when, when there is a tiring day, it can be, it can be difficult. That's for sure. But uh, there was one one study method which I, I really really loved, and uh, when I I started to to study Bhagavad Gita like that, and when when I, at that time I co combined different sources like uh, first uh, reading uh, Srila Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita, and then other commentaries on Bhagavad Gita like um, there is a commentary called. Uh, uh, Gita Bhushan that's from uh, Baladevi Bhushan and uh, there is uh, another one from uh, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur uh, uh, I don't remember now the, the title anyway that was the second one and uh, also have a book from uh, Burijan Prabhu he also has a, uh, some commentaries on, on the Bhagavad Gita and uh, and also uh, Chaitanya Charan Prabhu has a series on uh, of uh, it's it's not book but it's uh, in, in classes series of classes on uh, Bhagavad Gita, and uh, and that was the the last one, and it's so nice that uh, you know you read one verse and you can read different approaches, and also it really supported this understanding how Srila Prabhupada um, collected all the meanings because you know you you read the first uh, first the the purport from him and when you read it from the Acharyas, oh I read it in Srila Prabhupada's purport oh that was also there so so it was also a nice uh, nice understanding coming from there and um uh, and uh, Chaitanya Charan Prabhu's classes were really such an extra. <laughs> so, so gave some, some new angles and uh, some new informations also. And uh, also because I, that's why I, I uh, 
quoted here uh, or, or mentioned uh, his classes here because it's possible to combine reading with hearing this way. So maybe for the mind, it's not so tiring that I have to, uh, I have to all the time read uh, the text, but uh, it's combined with hearing, which might be easier. So, so it's a little bit uh, balances these things. Yes, that helps, you know, because right now I'm just hearing and I'm not able to read. And when I start reading, mm -hmm. it, it, it's either one one is more than the other kind of uh, things are happening. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you. Yeah, and and I would add uh, one more thing that uh, sometimes I I uh, had this experience that it's also important uh, which book we read, because uh, sometimes there is a difference that uh, we are, uh, how to say, we we like some books more than others. I remember that uh, Urmila Mataji once said in, in her class that uh, one devotee approached her and said that, oh, I have so such great difficulty with reading. It's it's so difficult for me. And and Urmila Mataji said that um, she had asked uh, this devotee asked uh, this devotee that, uh, but uh, is there any of the books uh, which which you like? And the devotee said that, uh, yes, I, I like uh, Nectar of Devotion, but it's so much above my level. And and Ur what Urmila Mataji said is, was not that, oh, okay, yeah, first start start with Bhagavad Gita and all the other books. But uh, she said that, okay, if, if uh, that's something which attracts you, then then just read that, that one. Because uh, that's also, you know, reading and in whatever way we we uh, associate with Prabhupada and and uh, the Acharyas and Krishna, that's always beneficial. So if that if if there are books you you like to read more, then just read those. Thank you so much. much if you don't mind, I can I can add one more point. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. I was listening to Amrendra, Amrendra Prabhu's class mm -hmm. and he was explaining it uh, to the devotees that, like you said in your class, Mataji, that we don't need to study all the Shastras, basically. Mm -hmm. Only studying what whatever is the essence of the Shastra. And uh, as you mentioned that, you know, we need to know Krishna. So best thing is to take one topic, you know, either Bhagavad Gita or Srimad Bhagavatam, mm -hmm. And and, re and keep on reading that all the like you know whichever the chapter or the verse it is, <clears throat> only that and or, as uh, Radha Vinodini Mataji mentioned, go through all other commentaries on that chapter, all the classes of Srila Prabhupada, all the Iskon devotees on that particular chapter, and then you will realize that you like you know that that topic is gone in your mind so easily now you will never forget in your life that thing. And then proceed for the second one. And that way, slowly by slowly, whatever you will study, you will at least understand and put it into practice. Because if you if you start, if you think that you can read one book by one book by one book by one book, then after second book, you will forget the first book completely. You don't know what you've done. For me, it is like that. I forget the chapter as well. If I read one chapter mm -hmm. and second chapter, I forget the first chapter. What was that about? Yeah. You know, so that and and when I when I started following that method, is so good. It is seriously. You will be so surprised that you will, as Mataji said, you you will remember all the words from that particular chapter when you are listening to the other other commentary. So yeah, just just check one one topic at a time one like you know he was saying uh, either you can take Prahlad Maharaj then read the Bhagavad Srimad Bhagavatam I think is a seventh canto isn't it Matthew? Uh -huh, yeah <clears throat> yeah just from that only Prahlad Maharaj is three chapter which is there on Prahlad Maharaj read that listen to all the commentaries on that particular thing and try and understand the actual character of Prahlad Maharaj why he was doing that what was he doing it what is importance of it, that those things and then you will understand all other topics very easily. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if that something which you would like to do it, try it. It's my experience. It has helped me <laughs> seriously. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank for you so that. much. Thank you for the comment. <laughs> yeah, I just remember two things. Um, one is a, a funny story, I, I would say. It's actually my one of my greatest embarrassments 
<laughs> in front of Guru Maharaj because and it actually it really showed that uh, I didn't have a proper mentality uh, while reading. Um, so I, I was reading Canto 11 from Srimad Bhagavatam and there was something which wasn't clear. I don't remember, but I, I had uh, one question in one of the, the, the uh, classes with him and uh, and he asked, uh, where am I at actually uh, at the book? And, you know, I, I'm reading this. Uh, I don't have it in book format because it's uh, I don't have it uh, in Hungarian. So I just uh, read it on, on Kindle in English. And, you know, Kindle um, uh, shows the, the, the percentage where you are at. And I couldn't even tell Guru Maharaj which chapter it was, you know, and it was really, really embarrassing. I just knew that, oh, I'm somewhere in the middle, <laughs> some 50% or something. And and then, you know, when it, it happened, I, I really understood, oh my God, it's such a bad mentality to, <laughs> to read like this. So so this this shows that sometimes we have these subtle, uh, subtle difficulties in our mentality. But uh, another more uh, constructive uh, uh, thing to say also that uh, sometimes it can be uh, it can be nice also to read together and uh, and that uh, that can be very enjoyable, especially I uh, there is there are two different different things you can uh, read in a group and that's also nice, but when we are reading with with one friend and you know we can share our deep thoughts deep uh, experiences that that you know when when vedic knowledge combines with with uh, with our friendly love and uh, and uh, confidentiality uh, with each other that that really gives an extra flavor and uh, and we can we can uh, experience uh, this knowledge in another way so that's also very nice. Thank yeah, you that's again. a very, Thank very you. good strategy. He's reading with other people is so helpful. Uh, uh, Mataji, Sonal Mataji, we are reading Bhagavad Gita if you want to join us. It's okay. not two people, only three people at the moment. We are reading it. And it is it is so helpful, so helpful. Because, you know, you might have heard some other other class or something else. You can put your input. I have done, I have heard something. I will put my input. The other person has read something else and they will put their input. Because it's not possible for us to cover everything. And, and that way we can get the other people's opinion. What Very, very good point, Radha Vinodini Mataji said. Reading with and others it it motivates others. you as well to read others. So it you can does, share. yeah. It's because something, set yeah. the day, day is set, and that time <laughs> you you know that this time is for reading only. So no no <clears throat> other commitments will be there, and you can read it, which is which is so good. So yeah, if you want, just message me. I'll yeah. Thank you, Mataji. Radha Vinodin, Mataji. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, actually, for me, uh, it's also very helpful that uh, I sort of have to uh, give these classes. Uh, I mean, I like to give classes, but uh, but uh, this is also a motivation that, you know, when I, I uh, just live my daily life, uh, I I always look for something which uh, which can be used which uh, exemplifies some kind of topic that because I I always remember when uh, Buddha Bhavana Prabhu gave class sometimes and uh, and he he spoke something about that uh, all the time you know sometimes devotees uh, always say the same stories the same metaphors the same examples and it can be so boring at some point to to listen to the same things with the same phrases again and again and uh, and i i really thought that yeah i i uh, i can expect that those who who listen to the class they they try to listen att attentively but uh, it's also kind of a relationship be between the class giver and those who listen to it that I also have to do my part and, and try to uh, make it interesting, try to make it new, to make it fresh. And also there, there is somewhere in the first canto uh, one, uh, one purport from Srila Prabhupada 
uh, where he he wrote that uh, those who who give class they have to try to explain the scriptures in an interesting way. So so that's why I, I I'm always looking for for uh, ways to how how to express in an, with another example or something. And sometimes there are so so nice examples coming up. So it it really helps to you know. Uh, put all this meditation on one class, one topic, to, to just uh, expand into my life, uh, even when I'm just going on the street or something like that. And uh, and it, it really helps to, to be more conscious. Yeah. Yeah, I think yesterday you gave that example of the bird on your dustbin. Uh, not yesterday, your last oh, class. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was last week, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes, that was a that was also something like this. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, I I read that. Uh, uh, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce this name. That uh, is there a WhatsApp group to receive the Maharaj up, uh, Maharaj updates? Can you add me to it? Uh, just for clarification that uh, this updates it's about the updates of uh, classes or or uh, because there is a whatsapp group uh, this uh, announcements group and uh, there used to be these uh, uh, reminders about these classes so it's possible to to add you there i'm not the admin but i can i can send your number it's just uh, just clarification if you if you meant that one uh soite ja checka uh sorry maybe i didn't properly pronounce your name okay anyway uh yeah so we we are uh, over the hour. <laughs> we were over the hour even when I finished. <laughs> but, <laughs> anyway, so if if there are no more questions, then uh, then we can conclude here. Thank you very thank very you. much. Thank you. Today I learned a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. So, over for another Thank class you. from you. Thank you so much for for you joining. Thank you, Hare Krishna. So, Vanja Kappa to be a strictly passive. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.